Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Interviews with Disciples and Devotees. Today, we are honored to have Anju with us. Namaste, Anju. Namaste. Hello. Well, there are so many questions I have for you, but from what you told me, I think we have to start with how you first came with your father to the ashram. Yeah, so I I was living with my mother, and uh, one day my father came and said, uh, I'm going to India, I want to see the Sri Aurobindo ashram. And uh, yeah, since he was in his early 20s, he was in the spiritual research. Your he, mother? No, my father. Oh, yeah, you're fine. And uh, then uh, I said, yes, I, I come. If I don't have to school, I go everywhere <laughs> with you. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, you don't have to. And it was funny because when I came here, I didn't speak a word English. Uh, we, 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 oh. we are German. <laughs> and uh, then there was a, uh, we were in the, the hotels and uh, uh, of course, I was a bit bored because I was with my father. And, uh, then there was a little school which was called Equals One uh, in front of the seaside guest house. And there I went for some month. And after three months, I spoke better English than my father. Do you know that my daughter went to Equals One? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and she knew His Fausto. Fausto very well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it and was so she lovely. loved him so much also. Yeah, we all Isn't loved that him. Isn't that interesting how the, our connections, it's so amazing. <laughs> so you did. So I think to... Fausto reopened me for school. <laughs> ah. Uh, then uh, the, um, it was more people from the ashram who told my father, but oh, let her go to the ashram school. It's a good school. And, and she said, uh, but she doesn't want to go to school. <laughs> and uh, then my father asked me, you would like to go to the ashram school? And I said, mm, yes, why not? <laughs> and uh, then I started in the ashram school and I went to Iradis boarding. I went in the boarding school. Oh. And I, for I think, for the first time in my life, I really felt at home. You were at home. At home. My hearing is a little. So, you must have met many teachers and many ashramites. Yeah, it's the thing I don't remember all the names. Yeah. So it's a yeah. I was a child, and things come and go, and it's just. But who is close to you? For me, the boarding mother was really close, but she died. Iradi, Ira Shaka. She ran a boarding in the ashram. Ah. I think she was also a, a, a. She went to school when mother was there. Yeah. So I went uh, one and a half years to school. And then we, I came back to Germany and met my mother. I just came for holidays. I went back for holidays in Germany. But then uh, when I saw my mother, I couldn't, couldn't go back to it, India so far. <laughs> mm. <laughs> could, uh, could you tell me, Andrew, how your father learned about Sri Aurobindo and what attracted him to Sri Aurobindo and his work and his yoga? I think he was very young when he started meditation, 24, 25, and I think he came across the books from Sri Aurobindo. Uh, and this for him spoke so directly to his heart that he, he was on the path. Oh. There was for him an opening up, and since then he's... Uh, since then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now you did tell me that he knew Shradalu very well. Can you talk about how that? he met Shradalu? Yeah. I don't know. Uh -huh. He once uh, told me about Shradalu, and uh, we wrote, we read some texts, and I liked it very much. And then he said, Do you, "Would you like to come with me to Shradalu? Uh, he's doing at his home. He's doing his readings, and the readings he's explaining the." 
the I don't remember what it was. The Savitri, I think. It was lovely. I just uh, could sit there for hours and listen, and and it was getting so clear when Shradalu spoke and put it into human words. Let's say like that. <laughs> that we can understand. That we can <laughs> understand. <laughs> Because I remember for me, uh, I, reading Sri Aurobindo is still, uh, uh, I feel, I don't know how you say it in English, illiterate, uh, somebody who doesn't know, uh, I don't understand, many I'm, things I I'm don't mature, understand. I'm yeah, I'm, I feel yeah. like, uh, so it's... Well, uh, I felt like that also. In, uh, sometimes I take, I have <clears> books <throat> at home. Sometimes a passage I understand and then I'm really happy and then I think, oh, <laughs> ah. I got something. <laughs> ah. Sometimes it's just a sentence. No? Do you read Mother at all? Yes, also I have some. Do. She's a little straighter, I think, Yeah, for it's us, easier yeah. for us. A little so. clearer for us. Yes. For me, I don't know. There's a, I, went, I came several times, even later on, no, to, to the ashram and... Uh, I often went to the library in the morning just to read. And, um, but at that point, you were only eight years old? No, when I was eight. You came back again? I came back with 14. And then I wanted to come back to the school, but this didn't work. The school, it was not possible to reattend the school. And this made me very sad. And luckily, there was this program, I think it was the 25 years of the school or 30 years of the school, the golden chain, mm -hmm. and we could come back to the ashram school. And I, I think this regret uh, was gone then because I could stay two months here in the ashram and uh, attend uh, the march past and all the things I did uh, when oh. I was a kid. And this was lovely for me. It was really. What, what year did? What years did you come back? I mean, you told me seventy six was when you first came with your. Father. When I first came, so seventy six. I was. I left when I was ten. It was in seventy eight, I think. Seventy seven and seventy seven, seventy eight. Yeah, I, I, then I was, um, I think I was 25, so it's 30 years back. When you came the When I came time? for the golden chain. No, the second time I was 14. Oh. I was 14. We came for some, uh, a little period, I think my holidays in summer. Or, uh, I came again with my father. Oh. And uh, yeah, uh, there I had this problem that I wanted to go back to school because and, I uh, and yeah, you couldn't and I in. I couldn't, and then I came back when I was nineteen. I came back when I was twenty-one, and I think I oh. knew. Yeah, yeah, I came often in the beginning. I came each time. Yeah, when I could. Did you come alone or with your father? No, my father is. Uh, became came to Oroville then when I was 16. He came to live in India. <laughs> it makes me think of, because I, I told him I he I said you're you're not so happy here. We were fighting sometimes, and I said, uh, Papa, you want to go in India? You want to live in India? Go. And uh, this, uh, some days later, he had his ticket. <laughs> but he loves it here. Yes, he loves it very much. For him, it's a bit, let's say, not. He his wife is teach is a teacher is working in Germany, and uh, it's a whole family thing that he can't be whole time here. He tries to be here most possible, but it's. Uh, it's not possible to live here at does complete. He, does he teach at all in Germany? No, I think he does some translations. Oh. Mm. From English to German? Yes, I think, yeah. I see. Oh. Now, you told me that you knew a few people quite well. 
I think you mentioned Champaclau. I didn't Swedish. know him well. I knew who it was uh, like a, a, a star, a sun, which sometimes you see and you just admire and just uh, feel the presence. And Someone was close to you in the ashram. Yeah, I told you about Suresh. Yeah, please tell me more. Tell us, every, tell all of us. <laughs> uh, Suresh was my big friend when I was eight years old. I felt really comfortable with him. It was like a, yeah, nearly like a father or even more. It was like a, an, a presence which protected me and... Wonderful. Any others in the ashram that you remember in, in the mm. succeeding years when you came in your late teens, early 20s? I remember, of course, my, my boarding mother, I Ira Shaka, Iradi, Ira my Ira. boarding mother. I am, every time I came, I went to see her <laughs> ah. and spent some time in her kitchen. She cooked very well. So mm. <laughs> this, when you are in the boarding, it's like that. When you're sick or you're not going to school, which is very difficult to not go. <laughs> but then she, at around 10 o'clock, she goes in her little kitchen. She went, at least now she passed, passed away. But she, and this was for me, uh, like, uh, yeah, it was wonderful to go to her kitchen and she always prepared something very good. And oh. it was, and you had a private moment with her because she, you had a different contact with her instead when you were all the girls in the, uh, she, she didn't have such a direct contact instead like uh, that. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your experience in Oroville. Uh, I, I, in Oroville, it, it's lovely because uh, for me, Oroville is a, oh, how to say, I, 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 I love this experience because I went there, I was eight years old, cycling with my father to the, and I re remember the first time there was nothing, there was only red earth, and I was so tired and I felt so hot, and I thought, what are we uh, doing here yeah. in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> Where is a bottle of something cold to drink? <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days very Ooh, well. Uh, and then we arrived at the fundaments, the only concrete fundaments of the Matri Mandir, and I was just like, and my father explained to me that they make uh, this meditation center, and for me it was inimaginable. Oh. No, that there are, I could only see stones, and uh, and so my experience is that to see even yesterday when I, it's so incredible, it's so incredible. All this in fifty years, all this is there. It's really there. I saw it when there was nothing. Yes. And uh, the people, I think, which come now, they don't have this. I, I, as I came several times, I have this. Yeah. <gasps> each time yeah. it's like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> the gardens of the Matrimandi is like, wow. Uh, first, the, the Matrimandi, which you see step by step <clears throat> growing and then the surrounding and, and it's... Uh, and also the fact that this experience is going on, it's all, it's, I always try to remember that it's as old as I am, no? Horrible. It's uh, born in, in 1960. 68, yes. 68. I'm born at the end of 1967. So it's... Uh, I'm as old as Oroville is, or ah. we're the same age. <laughs> we oh, oh, wonderful. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm still here, and <laughs> it's still growing. So yes, it's yes. Uh, a miracle. It's really, you know, and I, yesterday I this, uh, I, I thought, or I had this flash that mother had this view of Oroville had this insight of seeing, so even it existed before, it, uh, she manifested it as her, her, her view or her, 
a vision a it. vision yeah. yeah and no it started there the vision and where we are now look it's it's incredible it's, it's the green belt the green belt green belt amazing. it's always green when you remember you you also remember this vast red earth desert. with nothing that's it couple of palm trees yeah <laughs> you were it. happy to find a palm tree <laughs> to find a shade exactly just a little shade for one and or we two. could see the sea from almost any point yeah. true yeah you remember that yeah i remember yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there were some huts with <laughs> some crazy people <laughs> living <laughs> oh yes yes well, mother wanted all kinds here. How yeah. else to make the experiment? Yeah. See, so we have to understand that also. And Sri Aurobindo said, "I don't, I don't really want saints. They would not like my yoga." <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, he said. So, where did you live in Oroville? What different places did you stay? Why, oh, I, I stayed in Grace. Mm. Because my father directly stayed in Grace, uh, beside Helmut and Schadermann. Uh, yeah, in Grace, and now we stay in Maduka, same spot somehow. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't move yes. so much. I visited. A, oh, it's lovely because Oroville, each time you go, you are different, and Oroville is different. So you, when people ask me in the in Europe. Ah, so tell me about Oroville. And I can't can't tell anything about Oroville. I say you have to go. It's uh, Oroville is is an ex experience and an experiment. So you you just uh, you go there, and each time you go there, even if it's three months later, you will see a different Oroville. You because you are different, and Oroville is different, and the people are different. It's not never the same. Yes. I don't know most of the people now. Mm -hmm. I knew everyone in the beginning, but now it's 3,000 people and, mm -hmm. and so much is going on. Tell me a little bit about your education, what you have studied, what is your interest in whether it's art or music. Mm -hmm. or I studied theater and clowning. You theater, theater and clowning. Oh, because I wanted when I finished my school, I thought, do I want to study some science or? And I didn't want. I thought, I what does the world need? And I thought the world needs the smile and the, the joy of living. And I, so I, I went to study clowning and theater. <laughs> I went to Brussels and mm. studied clowning. And yeah, I I lived with that for a long time. I went to Italy and uh, built up a circus school with my. What kind of school? A circus school. A the circus school. Mm -hmm. like, oh, you have to tell <laughs> us about that. This is so interesting. Yeah, yeah. My mm, my boyfriend was a juggler, and I liked a lot circus also. All the body work, physical work for me it was. Uh, yeah, this also was always part of my living. So we did several shows. We built up the circus school. Uh, we had two kids. Uh, so um, since 25 years, I'm in Italy. <laughs> oh. And since, uh, yeah, I, I taught a lot. I w was into teaching, teaching circus and theater for kids and adults. And since five years, I'm. <sighs> this is difficult. Yeah, I, I, it combines everything, f flows together to this. Uh, uh, it's all consciousness and uh, energy. You, when you work with people, for me, I my interest, my real interest for is balancing, the balance that people are fine, how they are, they are happy with what they are, that the kids are together and happy together how they are, and that there are no need to change anybody or you know, and to, to define or 
And this, in, especially in my circus camps, when I had the kids for a week without the adults, it was um, lovely because you can see the first day as a bit, yeah, and then suddenly, if you leave the space, especially because you work in the nature, and nature does a bit, bit good work too, you know? it's balancing. It's, uh, the thing is, uh, you come into an equilibrium, and that's what I'm really interested in. Oh. I'm really interested in where to find the balance, where to find this mm, peace, where I just, I am, I am. And uh, I'm working with that, researching on that. Uh, <laughs> did, and the, did the children improve greatly? Did some of them really take off? The, it's it's a lot of uh, like uh, yeah I think some really take off, but um, often you you as a teacher can't see them because you don't uh, follow uh, them so, uh, such yeah. a long time. But it's seeds <clears throat> seeds you put, no? Yes. The experiences they have, they know it is possible. It is possible, this, uh, this uh, freedom and this uh, space f for of being is possible. So if you, I think if you experience that, someday it will come back. <laughs> uh, Have you met Hamish and Fifth? No, I don't know who they are. Well, they are the clown people okay. in Oroville, and they do a lot of Puppet programs. <coughs> oh, nice! So I, with I puppets. Really, yes. Okay. I would like you to meet them one yeah, day. Yeah, would be nice. They're they're wonderful people. <laughs> Hamish and Fifth. Hamish and Fifth. Where they, do they come from? I think he may be Scottish. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure about her. <laughs> but uh, I said uh, they're wonderful people. Mm. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your uh, formal education. What did you study in Germany and, and your life in Italy also? Yeah, I went to school, I don't know how you, second degree when you are 18 and you finish and you can, could go to university, but I didn't want to go to university. Ah. <laughs> I went to go to the theater school, international theater school in Brussels, ah. because there was clowning on the in the program, and I met the teacher before, and I, I really felt I have to go there. And so that was your way? That was my way. I was oh. 19, I went to Brussels, and I started my way into theater, and uh, acting is serving. You serve the personage. It's, uh, uh, we worked a lot with masks, with Balinese mask, oh. with uh, mask from the Comedia dell'arte, and it's uh yeah it's 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 incredible because you the way we worked no it we were researching on when does the mask take life when does this piece of wood or a piece of mm, leather begins to live why and what what is the the spark and uh, so it's like uh, suddenly you feel it, and uh, you no, know, you are behind, and you open your eyes, and sometimes it doesn't work immediately. But sometimes you have something like uh, you just have to follow. I <laughs> studied a bit, and the question I usually have is. Um, who is behind the mask? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. The ego. No, that's the, the lovely work with the mask is that your ego, yeah. your pretension is not there because you right. see the right. you see the the mask. The mask is there. There, I understood a lo lot about acting. Acting is serving. That's why I said it. Acting is serving the personage. Is serving the character, 
you with your body, with all what you are, serve this pers this character, you have to interpret it. So it's not you. It's never you. It's just you give all, all you can <laughs> to the character. Mm. So for me, it was very spiritual. It was oh, a yes. uh, great work, and that's why I think I loved it so much. <laughs> So, did you do it in Germany or in, in Belgium? In we Belgium? did. Uh, we did a lot of research in Belgium, and then I came with uh, my friend. That of these days, we made a, a show uh, from Dario Fo, um, the Tiger Story. We played it here in the Alliance Francaise. We played it in Delhi and Bombay, and uh, oh. <laughs> we made a little ah. tournée here. How many languages do you speak? Four. Four. Mm -mm. English, German, French. And Italian. Italian. <laughs> Marvelous. Oh. And then well, I went to Italy. Yeah, and yeah, tell me about that. went more into the circus, the circus and juggling <coughs> and physical work. We we built up the circus school first of all. We made the shows, which were shows you can present in all kind of circumstances. You don't need a classical stage with lightning, but you can play in Italy. You can like in India, you can play outside, even maybe even better than in 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 it, India. It's too hot. In Italy, you can really make uh, outside shows. Uh, so what I like about these shows that are very simple and uh, you touch everybody. For me, I wanted to get out of the theaters. I wanted to be in, in interaction with uh, the, the, how you call it, with the, the guy who's building furniture and the guy who's making houses and uh, the housewife. And uh, so when you play in the street, you you meet everybody and you can you ah. you hope to touch everybody with what you bring uh, did you feel it became a family sometimes of, so yeah. of sorts yeah yeah so what did you do in this cir circus thing i've seen seen so many circuses no i did uh, i had uh, the fir oh, the first show <laughs> The first show, I was walking, walking on the big ball, and uh, had a lot of. I had a like a how you call it uh, when you go fishing, like, uh, a line or yeah, a, a line, rod. and uh, I had a, uh, a little bag, and the people could take uh, some aphorism or a nice. Oh. And uh, so I read, searched nice things that the people could you know. So <laughs> how beautiful! And uh -huh. now, what you go are you going to do when you go back? You told me you're going back first of March. You only have two weeks left, <laughs> but they are Mother's birthday and Oroville's birthday. So, yeah. I just bathe in this. Beautiful atmosphere here. For me, it's just uh, coming. It's being at the source, no? Here being is important. I didn't come for twelve years, and I, I realized I have to come more often. It's good for me. It's very important for me to. Yeah, mm, maybe I can't make it every year, but at least every two years I should come for Ooh. some time. It would be good. This is something I. I try to realize my life. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I do this coaching since four years. I'm uh, how you go like a facilitator. I accompany people in the mountain in Italy and uh, to. I th for me, it's just I'm just making a passage so that they can be in nature with themselves. And so sometimes I give them a look on or another view on on their situation or what they feel or just asking two or three questions without intervening or I don't give uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's not intervening. It's much more going into the listening. I would like to, yeah, I ask mother to be a bridge uh, just to help people to go a bit deeper to get more connection. That's my my new way out of all this <laughs> theater and circus and uh, just uh, yeah it's it was always there this wanting to bring the people more to themselves to what is themselves to what is inside and uh, I'm looking for good ways because. Of course, we are all in our conditionings, and. Uh, but I imagine Oroville <laughs> must be the best place for you. <laughs> That's what my father said this morning. <laughs> he said, "I think he, he, the, your place is here." I think. Yes. <laughs> and uh, tell me a little bit about your f feelings of Oroville in the present day. I don't have any negativity in my interviews, but <laughs> but some some comments are always welcome. Well, I think Orville <clears throat> is going to a difficult moment, and I think uh, yeah, I feel there's a lot of tension, but evolution, especially in dark moments, give. Uh, Space and you know it's uh, it gives a push. So I think even in our lives we know and we look back. Then there are very dark moments, but after you your path further, you can you learn and so I think we there there are or it should should they should just um, receive and say okay uh, this is a difficult moment without uh, worrying, worrying so much. You should not worry, it's part of the path. It's... Uh, Do you feel mother frequently? Yeah, Sp especially when I'm here. Very good. Very good. What will you do in coming years when you're here in Oroville? <laughs> Anything being revealed to you as your way of contribution, participation? Anything is fine to do. I don't... Oh, you have Mother's protection and Mother's guidance, so something will come. Sure. <laughs> and uh, I feel you to be a very quiet person, generally. Calm, except when you're talking about your circus things. <laughs> 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 but I, I would like to ask you if you could speak a little bit about your father and, hmm. and his... Uh, his search, his nature, his experience, his aspirations. My father came when he was, I think, yeah, he was 30 when we came the first time. And uh, for him, I think it's, uh, Oh, it's difficult to talk about the path of somebody else. Mm. I feel him very... But you were so close to him for so <laughs> long. So. Did he prefer the ashram to Oroville at that time? Of course, there was no... No, no, no. For no. him, it was always clear. It he was would... always Oroville. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. For him, it was always clear to go to, the, mm. to Oroville. I think he feels v very connected to the mother in Sri Aurobindo since he read the first book. Since the first time? Yes, huh? I think for him was really, uh, and he stays on this path and has his... He, he what? Uh, sorry. Yeah. He stays on, his, on this path. On this he, path. He didn't look, uh, I, when, I think when he got the book from Sri Aurobindo in his hands, he didn't look 
anywhere else. It was uh, clear for him that he found uh, the yoga he was searching for. And uh, yeah, and then he came several times until he decided to stay. And uh, I think it was a big step for him. When did he decide to stay and how many years? Uh, he was nearly 40, 39, 40. And he stayed, uh, yeah, he came. I was 16. I think I, I think I helped him with my go, go what your heart is calling for you. No, so he, he, yeah, I was 16, he was 40, no, yeah, somehow, yeah, around 40, 41, and uh, yeah, then he decided to stay, and he stayed, um, actually, the last the last uh, 10 years maybe he's more in germany because of his wife but not because of his heart <laughs> not because of his, his heart his heart no i see <laughs> he would love to stay i think i think he's he feels his place is here or he feels at home here but we all have also the you know, our loved ones and so and yeah. he has a, also a skin problem, so for him staying, the, the, he could not stay the whole year, I think. Heat, the, heat. The heat and the skin. And the sun. And the sun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I know other people who mm -mm. have it also. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't protect himself enough when he was young, no? He got too much sun on his arms and... Uh, and we don't have this lovely dark skin like the Indians. <laughs> we are not made for this sun. <laughs> Dr. Pachikovka tells me it's fine up to 8.30 or 9 in the morning. Mm. After that, no. Sure. Oh. Ah. Yeah, I don't know what to say for the path of my father. I know that when he met Shradalu, for him it was also a very important experience. And What is your father's name? Michael. Michael. Michael from Grace. Michael. Mm -hmm. Last name? Ormelu. Is there anything else that I've missed that you would like to share with, with, mm -hmm. uh, with the world, actually? I mean, we have spoken a lot about your aspiration for harmony, for helping others, for perhaps opening others to new views, inner mm -hmm. and outer. That's why I think I have to be not in Auroville, <laughs> because the people who come to Auroville, I think they should or they probably have some aspiration they yes. are here for that. Yes. So yes. Uh, yes. my place is like these ambassadors no? uh, sitting somewhere, <laughs> 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 <You're> <laughs> spreading out, like <laughs> trying to spread a bit <laughs> consciousness. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, be confident. It's a, it's a great journey that we are here on earth. Thank you, Anju.